Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel for another video that will be found on the How I Do blank in my homeschool playlist. I started this playlist about a year and a half ago for this exact reason. It's when I keep seeing the same question, a specific question being asked on how I do something in homeschool. That's what this playlist is for. And today we are gonna be talking about reading in homeschool. Ever since I shared our end of the year reading videos, I've received a lot of questions on how I do reading in our homeschool. And so I'm gonna answer that question today for you guys in this video. If you have other questions like specific ones on how I do things in our homeschool, take a look through this playlist because chances are there will be a video on that topic for you. But if you are someone who watches this and then has another question on how I do something in my homeschool, leave a comment on this video because I will come back to the video and check if there's any uh, comments from you guys, like please make a video on this with a lot of thumbs up. That means a lot of other people want it too. Um, I'll come back and then I'll make that video for you guys. But today we're gonna be talking about reading, how I do it in my homeschool. I always give the disclaimer, this is how we do things. I'm not saying this is the best way. I'm just saying this is the way that I do it, what works well for my family and my kids um, with you know their personality types and all of those things. So let's talk about reading. All right, so let's start at the beginning. My kids love to read. I feel like I need to say that because if your child is a struggling reader or does not enjoy reading, then this this advice or this uh, you know explanation of how I do things probably would not be the best for you or your child. So I just want to throw that out there. I know I'll probably get asked, so how did you raise kids who love to read? Um, and I could do a whole other video on that. So let me know if you guys want to see that. I think I did some things right that led to that, but also my kids, just who they are, they enjoy reading. Okay, back to the point. So in our homeschool at all times, I require my children and require feels like a way too, way too strong of a verb um, because they are, they, they would, they want to do this anyway. But for the sake of the video, I require them to be reading one chapter book in addition to whatever book their language arts curriculum has. So my kids use The Good and the Beautiful. Oftentimes there's a reader that comes with it. Now, the reader is different to me than let's say a chapter book in the high school levels. So if they are required to be reading, let's say the screw tape letters from CS Lewis, then that book would count as their required reader and they would read it when the curriculum references them to do so. My younger kids have a different little reader. It's more short stories. And so I do require them to read an additional chapter book on top of that reading. Now, they are required to do that in their homeschool day. It's a part of school to silently read. My kids being in fifth grade and above, they are all very capable of silently reading. I will ask them questions. Um, their curriculums ask them comprehension questions. And so we've never really struggled with them telling me they read, but they didn't read. They know better than that. But when they were younger, I used my book report sheets that are on my website, which is linked down below, to verify, you know, more often that they were reading. And my kids also read aloud to me their silent reading books when they were younger so that I could help them, correct them, you know, all of that good stuff. So in our homeschool, they are required to read one chapter per day. Um, I will of course make exceptions if the chapter is very long or very short, but in general, our rule of thumb is one chapter a day. They are required to do that during school time. So that is not something that they do before bedtime. They read their chapter during our school day and it's really good for me because it gives me a chance to work with my kids independently, one-on-one um, -on -one, while the other ones are reading independently. Sometimes they need help and you know it's just one of those tools to be able to say okay go read your chapter now so i can help your sister and then you know we'll come back so that is the requirement that they are to read my kids read on their own all of the time um 
for enjoyment they they read in the morning before we start school they read in the car everywhere we go they always have a book and they all read before bed but those books that they read during those times are their choices of course with you know appropriate parameters put on them they i buy all the books so i i know what they're reading um but those are not things I regulate. So however much or however little they want to read during those times is fine. But the school reading is assigned. They keep a list on the reading logs that I have on my website. And they have a start date and a completed date. And we keep a list of every book that they've read. Now, a lot of you are going to ask me, how, where do I find books? How do I know? Well, from homeschooling for so long, I've got a lot of books that my older kids read that have made their ways down. I've got a lot of re recommendations from you guys. I have used other curriculum companies who have book lists uh, to pull from. I have my own list of classics that I want all of my kids to read before they graduate our homeschool. And then we follow my kids' interests. Sometimes I find a, a cool book or a series like The Wing Feather Saga, and that ends up being one of my, my kids' favorite books they've ever read. Because I've been asked so much for book lists and content help, because I know it's hard, um, I did create book lists on my website, which is linked down below. There's blog posts for a variety of different ones. So if you're coming up short, I have years and years and years of books that we have read that are on that list, and you will find that link down below. Uh, also, you know, my kids have gone to the bookstore and bought some books and the content hasn't been great. They've come to me and we've disposed of the book. That has happened several times. I personally do not screen every book that my kids read because I cannot. Um, I will do a flip through. I will do a quick Google of the author, but sometimes even with doing that, it does get by me. And so I'm not able to read every book that my kids read. So that is where the good and the beautiful comes in. Their library on their website, which we have so many of their books are pre-screened for content, morals, um, and so that is, those are books that I do not have to pre-screen or even worry about. Um, so we, we do those as well. But as far as required reading, they, that's what is the requirement every single day. I get asked a lot too, uh, do I choose all of the books my kids are going to read at the beginning of the school year or do I just let them choose off the shelf based on what we have and what's appropriate for their level? I've done it both ways. Uh, my kids do enjoy choosing their books and so the last few years that's what we've done more of. They will look on the shelf and I'll say, okay, this is kind of your little section before the school year starts. I'll kind of group up some books that would be appropriate or that I think they might enjoy. So, you know, from like my youngest daughter, you know, my oldest was like, oh, I read that in fifth grade and I loved it and she remembers and so I make a little section and then they just choose from those. Uh, so, or, you know, sometimes we end up at Costco, they end up with a new book and they say, can I read this for school next? And I say, sure. So, you know, it's one of those things that we just kind of ebb and flow with. I have done like a pre-selected number of books, but then my kids were always exceeding that number. And so it was just kind of one of those things where I said, okay, you guys choose the books from these groupings. And that is, you know, their chosen book that they are required to be reading during school time. Whatever they read on their own time, if we check out books from the library, um, if they get a new book for Christmas, if they get just a book that's for entertainment value only, they read that on their own. And again, that is not something I track. My kids love reading. I'm super thankful that they do. I feel I've encouraged and fostered a love of reading in my children, which is a blessing to me. Um, I didn't necessarily grow up loving to read, and so it's been really great for me to see that my kids love reading and they're, they're great readers. And so I think it's a combination of a lot of different things that I could probably talk about in that video if you guys want to see it. But that is how I do reading in our homeschool for my kids assigned reading.
Now, the last little area that I do want to touch on is the subject of read alouds in this video. So my kids are from high school down to fifth grade. We still do read alouds as a family in morning basket. Um, and my kids also take turns participating in that. So I will pass the chapter book around that we're reading. Everyone will read a few pages and then pass the book. Sometimes it goes really beautifully and seamless and sometimes it's very difficult with passing the book, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, but it's great for them to practice reading in front of each other and listening to each other read. I've found great benefit in that. So we still do read alouds as a family. Uh, I will do that all the way through graduation for each of my kids. I just love that time. It's something that I'm never gonna give away no matter how old they get. And my kids enjoy listening to, um, to the books that I read. So we are usually reading two books at a time, one a missionary story and then another chapter book of choice, whether it be from the history curriculum or a different book that we've just happened upon that we wanna read as a family. Um, and then a whole bunch of other picture books in the Bible, like I'm not even talking about that. But as far as books go, we're generally reading two at a time. So I hope I answered all of the questions surrounding reading, how I do things at this stage of the game in homeschool. If you have any more questions after watching this video and scrolling through the playlist to find other videos that you might be wondering about, leave it down below. And if you have another video suggestion you'd like to see on this playlist, you can leave it here. I will come back and check for you know, any other ideas of how I do X, Y, or Z specifically in homeschooling. Thank you guys so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up before you go. It's a free way to support my channel. If you need book lists, all that will be down below and I will see you guys again really soon. Bye friends.